Hey guys, Steve Yu here. Uh, so now we're going to move on to do the Node app and hook that up with MongoDB. If you look at some of the, the previous video, uh, we have MongoDB, how to set that up um, on the channel. And now we're going to take the next step and put in some, the, your Node app so that you can have some, um, you can have the server-side uh, JavaScript return information. And then our last piece of the three-part three, three part series is going to be building a React app, and then uh, that'll be our front end, hooking, making calls to the Node, uh, to the Node API, and then that will retrieve and um, do CRUD operation on against uh, MongoDB. So first things first, now I'm going to take you from scratch here, so bear with me. Uh, there are going to be some mistakes along the way, but you know this is uh, going to be a real in-depth tutorial, I'm trying not to skip any parts, and I'm going to be stopping the explain a few a few gotchas along the way so um, so here we go first thing we want to do is go ahead and bring up our terminal um, so I want to make sure that you to show you that uh, let's get this a little bigger here okay so that uh, make sure that Mongo is running um, let's go Mongo okay so Mongo is running here uh, let's look at the DBs show DBs okay so we have a test DB um, and uh, let's see if there's a, if we use test and then let's see if there are any um, collections. We're going to be creating a product uh, as if you had an e-commerce um, site. So you had product oper operations on uh, products in a table. Um, that's going to be, uh, we're going to run some CRUD on that with our Node API. So let's make sure that, let's see what's in there right now. Um, so let's do db and then products.find. Okay, so right now there's nothing. All right, so let's build a node app from scratch, okay? Um, I'm going to go with, um, let's, uh, let's see, let me cancel out of this. Um, I'm going to go tmux on this one. I've been picking up a little tmux. It's been pretty helpful. Terminal multiplexer. Um, there's a lot of things like iterm. You can actually get um, a lot of tabs and they'll kind of you know quadrant out a, a terminal there and then um, thing with tmux is it's very uh, integrated with vim um, that's kind of the route I'm going I'm, I'm really enjoying my vim uh, giving it a good try um, you know not your three weeks or something like that I'm gonna give it a good three to six months uh, probably around probably around three months right now um, getting better uh, obviously a lot to improve on speed wise um, and even commands uh, that will probably lead to speed anyway so uh, let's go ahead with this so here's tmux um, we'll have one thing and then let's go ahead and um, I will let's see let's create another um, and then so one thing will be uh, we'll have v uh, VS Code open um, and then we'll have the node app running uh, we'll have NodeMon running that so that it'll constantly refresh, almost like a hot reload. Um, then we'll have the MongoDB, and then we'll have another term, a third terminal um, screen in our tmux, just to run separate commands. You know, while the other two are being kind of dedicated towards DB and the the, um, the server. All right, so here we go. So uh, let's get one more. Um, I'm gonna make this one right below it. Um, so right there. Okay. So that'll be our free terminal. Let's go up here. Um, let's just run Mongo here, and then let's go Tmux over here in this Tmux window. I can just do. Um, we're gonna build. We're gonna build our stuff here. So uh, that's gonna be the server. Um, so let's, let me just go here real quick. All right. So so here. Um, let's go in. I have my projects folder right in there. Uh, let's make something brand new. Let's call it um, make directory, and then uh, let's call it um, uh, my node API. Okay. CD into that my node API. Um, I'm gonna go. Okay, so uh, let's go over to here. Okay, and let's uh, CD projects my. Oops, my Node API. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and create our folder real quick and build a quick Node app, and then we'll build our server JS or the thing that we'll be kicking off with Node Mod. So first, we're gonna um, you can see that there's nothing in here. 
So remember, I actually have a Build a Simple Node app uh, video out there, and that's going to show you how to get through things. And basically, this is going to be a real quick, um, real quick, uh, uh, I guess, review. Um, so you'll have Node installed, so you can npm. Um, so if I do, uh, uh, you know, make sure Node's in there. There's, there's Node, so you can tell that something's working in there. And so now I want to go ahead and create the node app so I can do npm init. And let's just go ahead and go through all the defaults because the main purpose is to get the API for you guys. So here we're going to, um, we can see that the package JSON is here. Um, let's go ahead and just immediately make our, make our server JS. So let's, let's, um, let's just vim. Or actually, let's. Uh, let me use VS Code for this one. So, uh, Vim within VS Code. So, um, so now I'll go ahead and uh, I guess just to create it, um, server.js. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. Well, actually, um, we'll just open up code in here. Let's open up VS Code. All right. Let's check that out. Um, okay. So there's package JSON. This is barely anything in there. Let's go ahead and add a file called server.js. This is going to be what we kick off. Um, and then uh, let me just show you. Yes, there's some plugin that is trying to do something there. But if I were to go to here, of course, you know that nothing would happen. Nodemon and then server.js. It's probably, okay, so it's waiting for changes, so there's there's not even a server there. So let's change that. So it's actually listening right now. You think that something's wrong right here? There's not anything wrong. Your, your server JS has nothing in there for it to do. So we'll put, put an express and everything else to build your node, uh, your, node um, your server side JS uh, file here. Okay, let's go. So first thing we want to do is we get, uh, let's see, we got Vim here. Let's get a constant of express. And that means that we just require express. Um, require express. Okay. And uh, uh, that one, that one's not there right now. So let's go ahead and get that. Um, so you can see it crashed. Can't find the module. So that means that we don't have it. Um, that then. So what we should do is npm install. Uh, Let's do save uh, since we'll need it, and then um, let's do express. Okay, go ahead and get that real quick. Okay, so we're done with that, and let's go back here. So we have express, and now it's waiting. So still, it doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead, and now we need to create the app. And the way to do it is simply instantiate express. We can, we can save that up. I'll just save like that. All right. Then we have um, we need to run on a port whenever you have a um, an express app. So let's go ahead and let's give it a port, and we're gonna call that um, 3000. Typical 3000. Local has 3000. And then let's just go ahead and get the app going. So app dot listen. I'm gonna put the port, uh, and then next thing is I just put like a message out there saying that it's running on this port. Um, pretty simple, pretty typical Express app. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so what you can do is you can do um, console log. Uh, and then you can put those weird little like tick marks here because then it lets you do the, I'm going to butcher it here, but the interpolation. So I have a port, I could call that variable without doing like all that concatenation like plus, you know, and then this variable plus. You start messing that up. You could just do it like this, almost like a, a printf or, um, um, you know, something where you can just, uh, uh, what's a C-sharp thing? Um, you get the idea. You can just uh, put your art, put your variables after or just kind of replace them um, dynamically. All right, so let's go. So let's say, uh, let's say listening on port 
and then we'll just put in uh, the way to do it is dollar sign and the curly brackets if I do port it will pick up the port in fact you get IntelliSense to support here um, we get the autocomplete so that's that and if we save this let's go back here and we are running on listening on port uh, 3000 so there you go there's your node uh, refresher now let's get to crud um, get to get to save stuff in MongoDB so first thing is let's go in order so crud C R U D create um, create read update and delete so I'll go ahead and show you each of those um, so first things first can we connect to the DB so what I like to use is mongoose um, mongo kind mongoose goes really well with MongoDB uh, has this like um, model so say we're building a product then you'll have a product model and that basically allows you to kind of get a hold of that collection or table but really it's a collection in, in a NoSQL in Mongo so it'll help you get a hold of those uh, using this, Mon this mongoose model and I'll show you that in a second here so first let's try to connect um, what we can do is uh, first let's get you can do mongoose um, dot connect and uh, in there you're going to actually we don't have that yet so let me go ahead and okay, let's, let's, let's get mongoose first npm install save mongoose This is really handy. You could do it through Mongo client. Um, the Mongoose is going to make your life a little bit easier. Uh, many, many tutorials out there for that. Hopefully this one will be even, even fill some gaps uh, since I'm going to go very step by step on this. If not, please leave a comment. I'll answer it um, and get you the information that you need because uh, you're, you know, to get this information to you is my mission. Um, it does me no good to, to learn and I've went through this many times um, you know I'm still gonna go through and fumble a little bit but uh, the general idea has been practiced um, quite a bit so I want to make sure that you guys understand this stuff alright so mongoose connect um, and then so here we will do a okay so I want to connect to all right, um, so the destination so uh, what we're going to do is put in um, a string and this is mongoose connect it's going to be mongo db and then it will be slash slash local host and then I think mongo runs uh, 27017 and then our database will be called test okay, so Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, mongoose connect and see what happens here. So app crash mongoose is not defined. Okay, that makes sense. And and actually this is perfect because why why it doesn't exist because I didn't actually tell it to use it. So we need to constant mongoose. You guys probably already knew that actually. <laughs> Beat me to that one. Uh, mongoose. Let's go ahead and save that. Oops, sorry. Okay, so here it's listening on this port, um, and then uh, Mongo is working. You can see that it's not crashed. It, it, it was listening and it restarted it right here. But hey, it tells you that you need to use the new parser, so you can actually put this in there. What if I just grab this? Let's see, and make this even better. Um, so now we can uh, let's go to the end here, and we can just uh, paste this in. See, all right. So see how I restarted, and there's no message here. The deprecation. So we're kind of up to date on what you should be doing for Mongoose. Um, so that's that. So that means that we're connecting uh, to the MongoDB, our local one. Um, and and when we do the first operation, when we post and create something, you're gonna see something in the DB. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that first route. 
so at that post, uh, so we're going to post something, so you want to send it a payload, something very simple. And actually before that, um, let me do this, let me define, you'll have to define a mongoose, um, first a schema, so let's do a product schema, um, constant product schema, this is how mongoose works. So what will happen is, um, the schema is just a JavaScript object, so you get everyone, I think you guys all know how to do this. Um, but then, then what you're going to want to do is you have a constant and then you have a product model, okay? And this is a mongoose model, and this is going to give it away right here. Mongoose.model. And then in here, okay, so you have the name of the string. Now, this is something I learned through repetition here. Basically, like, you'll see in the tutorials, you'll see something like this see like product oh does it have to be capitalized no it doesn't actually and then it knows to pluralize it um, in the collection so if I say product here we have no collections called uh, product it it will create a collection called products like plural because it knows the plural and I'm sure there's a configuration where you can control what the plurals could be or the, the collection names but by default it actually does um, it puts an S or does the pluralizing correctly um, so you can have the, the capital P or the lowercase p, um, but it's actually, it actually doesn't matter. Um, we we'll use uh, the tutorials, a lot of them you'll see probably as a capital P. So just for that reason, just for that reason, I'm going to actually, I'm just going to put a lowercase p because, you know, because why not? I want to go against it and prove myself wrong. And then if it still doesn't work, which I don't believe it, I believe it will work then I'll have proved my point that the capital P or lowercase p does not matter. You don't get hung up on those semantics. You should be questioning all these things. You shouldn't be just, you know, it needs to be a capital P. No, that, that doesn't make any sense. You need to test the negative. You need to really fiddle with it and get the understanding of, you know, what matters and what doesn't when it comes to the syntactical sugar. All right, so we got that. And now you will do... Um, now you can just say, like, did, you saw that it says schema right there? And I kind of labeled it explicitly to, to kind of give us easy hints here. So, uh, schema. Now you have the model. And basically, like, this is, this is like, if, you, if you've ever done, like, C Sharp or Java, this is kind of your POCO or your POJO, your plain old, like, Java CLR object or, or, or some sort of, like, dumb, like, JavaScript Java object. Um, so then what you can do is you can... Uh, you can new up one of those, and kind of in JavaScript too, we have this mongoose model. You can new up one of those, and go ahead and pass it a payload. In this case, would be passing name, and then that will it will use that request body, and then grab that information, and then go ahead and use that to populate the MongoDB. So I'll show you that in one second. So now we can go on to the post. Let's go ahead and post. First thing, you just got to put your route. So this is all the routing that's going on here, or your endpoints, however you want to look at it. So I like to do something, like this is a product, um, let's just for be very explicit, let's say product, um, let's call it add product, because okay, we'll just do the verb and then dash product. Okay, so add product, okay. So we will not need anything here, um, and then we will pass, let's see, um, and then so next will it'll be the function. Let's use ES6. And you could do function, you know, you could do function um, this if you want. And then define your function on the fly like that. But you, you probably know that ES6, you can just do one of these. And then you can just put in, you know, all your goodness that you wanted to do from here. So um, remember that uh, when we're over here, um, we're gonna we're gonna wanna capture kind of out of thin air if, if you're not familiar with like API development but but basically you can always uh, whenever you have web APIs or APIs uh, anything you can always grab the request it's, it's very negative but the request and the response um, in, in, at least in node here so you can do let's just call the first thing it'll grab the um, sorry, request and then you get you can get the response too um, and that, in, in this case, you'll see that it's like, I want to send back a response of this to, um, back to the user. So 
So a response from this node API back, so that that's what the RES stands for. But the request is what we're concerned with because there would be a payload in there, in this case name. We want to take from the body, use that to build something and store it in our MongoDB for this end. So let's go ahead and add something. And what we're going to do is let's do, um, you'll have to define uh, the clear, let's see. Uh, let me let me work backwards here. This is um, we're going to do so add product and we will oh, this too. This is that we're going to script this. Um to post and we add this we get the uh, request body um, Okay, so, so we, we basically can just create the product model and then save it. So what we can do is um, constant product. So this is now the product. We're going to create one. And you can do new, um, oops, new product model. And then you could just pass it the request body. And that's only be the name. So you could, you could send it whatever you want. And, so, and as long as it's defined in the schema, it'll pick it up. So we have this, and then if I do product uh, dot, uh, now we can save it to Mongo. And then this this is a uh, promise. <clears throat> so it will it'll do an async operation here, and then next uh, let's do dot then, and then here we can say let's capture let's call it an item here. And then uh, you'll want the, let's just, um, it'll save it already. So we, let's just send something back to the server. Um, item saved. That's not too informative, but the point here is to show you that it will save. And then, you know, you build a validation as you build your API more solid and do your, um, do your like token checks. Um, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so that's that. Um, let's go ahead and let's let's do the catch. You gotta, you gotta catch all this. Any errors? Same thing. Get the function going. And uh, let's just say, let's say we, you know, uh, item not saved. So that's it. So let's go ahead and test this endpoint. Um, got this saved. It's just gonna be add product give it a request body, and then it should save, okay? So let's check it. Let's go back here again. Let's go to Mongo. Oops. Okay, come on. Get up there. All right, Mongo, db.products.find. There's nothing there. So let's go over here and uh, fire. Okay, well, I'm sorry, we're, we're already fired up. So I like to use, let's open up Chrome. I like to, a lot of people like to use Postman. I, I like to use, uh, okay, I also did that twice. All right, and I like to use Restlet. That's just what I used first, so I have been to use it. Um, so the first thing you do here is, you want to do a post, localhost 3000, add product, remember that's our, um, that's our endpoint, and it uh, looks like it was here from last time, let's call it something else, um, let's call it um, Tom the Cat, okay, and, okay, application JSON, it, it, it's probably going to pick this up, but basically you need application JSON, and so let's send it, okay, so, so item saved. Um, but, you know, don't believe that. Make sure you check out the actual right here. Let's do db.find. Okay, hey, there's something to say. But I passed a, an actual body, and it should say a name of Tom the Cat. Why is that not happening? Turns out that um, your Node app needs to know how to parse the body. And luckily, there's something notorious in the Node community called body parser and you can have tons of um, 
configurations around that where you can put certain uh, rules in place and, and you know what have you, you can configure it to your heart's content. But basically all you'd have to do is this. Um, let's go back up. Let's go to line. I thought I had relative numbers turned on for them, but um, let's go up here. Um, body parser. Uh, so let, let's also add the body parser. Okay, and that's going to require, you know, kind of get used to this now, body parser. Okay, we don't have that yet, so that's going to crap out. It's actually going to, let's see. Okay, see it says can't find the module. Let's go ahead and get that module. So npm install. To save that body parser. Let's get that real quick. That. Okay, that. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, maybe I should follow the standard convention here. And you can go to NPM store if you want, though, so you don't have to save. Um, so you don't have to, you know, run into those problems. But anyway, okay, so let's go back. Um, there's well, got, I did it here too. So let's do uh, delete to the end here and actually by the parser. Okay. That should be like that. Okay, so restart, it's fine. See, I keep checking the server to see if it's going to tell me some errors. Um, we got the connection. Um, let's do. Let's do about, let's add the, let's do the body parser here, so you can do, um, we can just pretty much tell the app to use body parser. Let's just do body parser. Dot, um, and you want it to use, it needs to be able to parse the JSON, and actually I think you, you know, you, Let's see if this works. Um, probably don't even need that. I was gonna do the body parser encoded URL, but I don't think we we don't really have that in this really simple example. So but that should work. Let's check it out. Okay, so it's listening here. Let's go back to our API here. Now let's send it again. Okay, we knew it would, we knew it would work, but you know, don't believe me. Let's go. Let's go here. And, okay, see how the name right here, there's Tom the Cat? Now it's there because it can parse the body. Node knows how to parse the body now. So here you got this nice GUID or some unique ID and then the name that we passed, which is the, um, the body, the, the body of the payload that we tested. So we know this create works. Let's go on to read. So now I'm just going to get it. How do you read something out of Mongo? Refresher real quick. Um, it's actually this right here, db. That find that's what we're doing to read. So we'll do a db products find and then we'll return all the products. So let's build that into our API. Okay. So if we just go down, I'm not the Vim curl yet. Um, so I did use the J a whole bunch of times. Probably should have just um, went down the line 26 right away. It's just a lesson. Uh, build that into your muscle memory. So let's do another one. Let's do app. Dot um, now we're just going to get the stuff, put our route in there. Let's do um, get products, and then uh, you can you can grab the request, the response, because you know you're going to be sending back something, which in this case would be like, some items and stuff. Um, and then ES6 syntax. You could do it either way. You could do the function if you want. You mix and match. But, it, you know, most people like how the ES6 stuff looks. All right, so now you can do... Um, so here is interesting. You'll have to query it. So we can we can, we can can build up the query or filter, however you want to view it. Um, I like to call it kind of query. Um, and then what you can do is... Um, uh, and and you, you'll, see, you'll see what it why I'm doing this in, in one second. Um, let's say, oh no, so that's the ID. So no, I'm sorry. Um, actually, we want to bring back everything. So let, let's just let's just bring back everything. Let's say constant. 
uh, you know what we can just do, let's just call the model, um, the product model dot, um, find, So you can find find all of, find all of those products. That'll come back. Um, you should be able to dot them, and then uh, let's see the items, and then you can actually. Um, so if there's something there that if it does return something. You can just send back the items, and then you know if if there's if there's something wrong, you can just um, you can send back, and then just send no items in the tree or something. Like that. Okay, um, let's try that real quick. So I know it's working still. Let's go here. Uh, so there should be one item, uh, two items actually, one without the name and one with the name and the body parser. Let's do this. Let's go get products. And I remember that we did a get on here. Let's get it. Okay, here's the items right here. Um, so that is working. Okay. So let's do CRU is update, okay, app.update. Now, here's one thing is that, uh, I went back and forth with this, is that, what's the difference between the update and the post? You'll go ahead and read out online and you'll say something like the item potency where you really only update the one thing each time and post runs a risk of doing something like you could create maybe, I don't know, duplicates or something like that. You can still, as long as you have the ID, you'd still update the same things. So and I've seen in an industry, sadly, um, that people still use posts for everything. So it's gets and posts. It's a, that doesn't make any sense. Like, what are all these other HTTP verbs out there for? It's probably better, and I'll, I'll probably do another video to actually get really in the weeds on why you should do this. Of course, you could do it with both, but when you want to get the job done, you can still do both. You can, Post is you know still fine. It's just um, that these verbs are here kind of for a reason. I'm sorry, it's not. A, it it is an update, um, but the verb will be put. So uh, actually, it's, yes, I'm sorry. Put uh, apt up put. So this is a the HTTP verb, and we're gonna stick with those because that's kind of the best practice to use those things, um, especially with the if the item potency hits you later in, you know, API development. Um, it just makes things different too. You're like, oh, is this, this post? That adds it. Oh wait, but this post updates it. That, uh, that doesn't make sense. I'm posting a body or doing other stuff even just because I can. Anyway, so the put is kind of more intended for an update here, uh, you know, despite the item potency. And anyway, let's go on and do this. So we're gonna update a product. And so let's say, Let's get the route here, and you can update oops, product. And one caveat is that um, I'm actually going to send the ID because you need to know what you want to update. Uh, so here would be that, and then you can do nice ES6 syntax. Let's capture the request response, just kind of um, <clears throat> standard stuff. And don't forget this one. Uh, okay, so now we need to update. So here's kind of that query. I'm going to put in a query and an update. So you want to query it to find that by ID, grab that item using the product model from Mongoose. And then you're going to update it with something else, like a different name. So we have Tom the Cat. I'm going to call it, we're going to update it Jerry the Mouse. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first, let's define our constant, or our, I'm sorry, query. And what that's going to be like. Well, I need to filter or query by the ID. So let's get that from the request um, 
you can get it from the request. Uh, we'll put it in the parameters here uh, because not many people know what that unique ID will do. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. JavaScript object. In Mongo, if you remember, let's flip back here. See, Mongo has the ID. There's like an underscore under in front of it, so that's what you need to do. Uh, you would have seen that it wouldn't have worked anyway if everything was in there. So ID, and then uh, so that needs to be. Let's grab request parameters, and then dot the ID. Um, and how it where is that? If you look right here with this colon ID, that's where it's going to grab it from. It knows to grab it after this slash right here. Let's go ahead. Next thing, we need the constant, and then this is what the update is like. What are you going to update it to so you can do another JavaScript object? Let's say name, and then whatever's in the request body is the same thing. This new name, that's what we're going to update it to. So take the request body and Let's just let's just be very explicit and call it. We're gonna put in a name. name now we can do um, we got a product model, so that's our access to the Mongo's Mongoose MongoDB using Mongoose. Let's go ahead and product model dot update. And then when I update, um, I can send it the let's see the query and the update what I want to update and then dot then and then now I get um, item. so here's here's uh, did it work did it not and did it work then we'll just response that send um, you know, item updated these are really stupid responses. There should be something better. But the point I, I want to show you the communication between the node and here. Everything else, once it's working, you'll obviously tidy it up, make it production level code, and then we'll go ahead and deploy things. Uh, okay. So here, uh, this is going to be your catch, and then grab that error if there's an error. The yeah, six syntax response that sound. Item was not updated. Let's go. All right, let's test that out. We got that saved. Let me check the server. That's okay. So it refreshed this thing. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, remember that this is a put. We're going to use all these HTTP verbs because it's useful. Update product is what we called it. Let me just double check. We called it update product. Put the ID at the end. Let's grab. So we have one of these IDs. Tom the cat. So just for for effect, grab this one. Slash. Put your ID right there. Now I'm gonna call it Jerry the Mouse. And my date right there. Uh, that was one of the greatest cartoons. Probably introduced too much violence actually. But, you know, that's cartoons back in the day when we grew up. All right, so Jerry the Mouse update. Um, let's fail fast. Okay, and it updated, so we didn't fail. Um, actually, it's actually good to to want it to fail because then you just learn more. But um, growth mindset. But item updated. Um, I've done this um, several times, and so I kind of knew it. Let's go check this DB because you shouldn't believe me that Jerry the Mouse right here. You don't see Tom anymore. There's still that blank one that we messed up with earlier with the lack of body parser. But here's Jerry the Mouse. So there's proof right there that we updated it. Let's get to the last one because I don't want to take um, too much more time. This is uh, uh, this might be about a half hour already. But yeah, so stick with me. Here's the delete and then um, then we'll put the React part in a separate video and then we'll do step um, simple Mern app instead of like a mean app with Angular. So we can get that going. Okay. So let's, let's finish this up here. Go back to our editor, and basically it's going to be the same thing for delete that an update's going to do minus um, anything you want to update because I just want to wipe it out. I don't want to update it with anything. So if I just go here, app dot delete, and then let's just put um, delete. Oops. Delete. Product. 
product, and then you, you need to know the ID because what do I want to do? Um, and then you can sketch the request or response just, just for normal stuff. And it's mechanical if you will. Um, move this up. And delete. Um, so here we're going to still query. Uh, I'll show you in, in, in case you can the capital Y if you're, if you're uh, curious of that um, but yeah so constant query ok so we have the query and what you do do we need this query? Um, yes we do because we have to identify which one that we want to but the update you don't need okay. so let's go ahead product model and give it some space Oh, and actually, did you see that? It's delete. I want to delete one here. Um, and here I can go ahead and let's just put the query because now it's going to know what to delete. Here, dot then. This is for a success. And let's just the item. Um, you know, we could return like, what item was deleted. You know, put that stuff. But, we wouldn't even have, we could have just put this on the line. But uh, just kind of a mechanical habit here. So when it's saved, we can just you know, send back um, item deleted. And then here, um, dot, what is this, the catch? And then uh, let's go ahead and response dot send. And then item. Is not to be clever. <laughs> All right, there you go. Let's go ahead and see if we can delete them. Now, we're, what we're going to try to do is delete this one right here, so that we're only going to have this left. Let's just delete both of them one by one. We should have nothing actually. Let's start with the Jerry the Mouse. Go back to our API. You want the delete, and this is going to change to delete. That's what we named it. And do it or you need to do it or so cool. Fail fast. Item deleted so it did not fail. Let's check it. Okay, so now we only have that one. Let's get to get rid of this too. Nothing here, so we deleted both of them, as you would expect. So that's CRUD, that's Node API CRUD working with MongoDB using Mongoose. Mongoose is really convenient. Um, you can use Mongo Client if you want, uh, do that code. Um, let me know if you want to see that, because basically Mongoose is just a, a well supported library and goes hand in hand with it. Almost as if you know C Sharp and Java and all those ORMs, it's ORM-y. I'm going to mess up the, the exact stuff. I'm more about showing you that this stuff is not really that hard. Um, using the tools, the, the popular tools that people use, I would recommend using Mongoose um, and not going full on. Just like how we use Express for Node APIs. Um, I mean, that's why they're mean apps or learn apps. Um, you know, they, they use Express because you can get off the ground in like three lines versus writing you know, a little bit more, maybe 10 lines, or um, between 5 and 10 lines for regular node uh, server, you know, if you're more, um, you know, just kind of don't want to use frameworks, purists, if you will. But these things help, and they're, they're really well supported and approved third party, you know, for test. Um, so that's that's it for now. This That's a CRUD app uh, for products, if you were doing some kind of, like, uh, MERN app with, um, with e-commerce, um, which is actually what I'm doing, so you could follow that on GitHub if you want. Um, and uh, just a couple lessons. Uh, took a lot of deliberate practice in order to do this. I'm going to be doing a video on that. Um, 
and I'll show you what I do for my deliberate practice. Um, just it's basically going through, and something I learned at, at a global day of code is you get like, oh, I want to save that so I can reference it later. The best thing to do, actually, if you want to get really good with it and not do the memory game, is to actually and to kind of understand it is to actually delete everything, write it again, delete everything, write it again, delete. It. Kind of like how you're memorizing like song lyrics when you're in the car, you're like that song again. I've listened to it for the fiftieth time, and then like magically, somehow mechanically, your brain and your mouth work together. You spit out all this stuff. That's what you want to get, is not without hard work and without losing some of that pride, but, you know, of course everyone can Google this stuff. The ones that can do this without thinking uh, do things a little bit faster because they don't waste time thinking, if that makes any sense. So I'll cover that in, the next, in another video. But next, the last part is to get the React app going. That's going to be real simple. We're going to serve it up from Node, um, from our Express app, actually, and that'll complete the cycle. So you have your three-step. Um, we came from Mongo, and then connecting with Node API, and then that that Node server is actually going to serve up our single page app, which will be the React app. So see you next time. Leave a comment below, answer it, um, subscribe if you haven't already, and I guess hit the bell too in case you want notifications on videos. I'm going to really ramp it up. I just do a lot of deliberate practice on this one, but um, I want to get this stuff to you guys as quick as possible and as deep as possible because you should you should really ask why for every single part and not just do it and say man I gotta stack overflow this and ask why it's like I want to show you the good stuff and get the good nuggets of information and that that's that's my mission I'm sharing this information so let me know and talk to you soon